Uh, hi folks, uh, a knife painting, I've done, this will be the third I've attempted this week. I've got my new large tubes of paint, the Winton 200mm tubes, that's the way to buy it. If you're going to use a lot of it. Uh, right, uh, saw the sea picture, I try and do it a bit thinner, with thinner paint than I did last, well, earlier in the week. Uh, could have tried a lighthouse. Have, have a horizon. Very simple, but maybe we can might put a lighthouse there. Uh, right, okay, I've got a couple of trowels here. Nice painting knife, nice and clean that one. It's very old. But uh, I wipe the, the blades clean with with a tissue. This is just cheap stuff, two pounds a roll, quite big roll. Uh, you need to be very careful when you pull the knife through the town or whatever you're using, town, paper town. Because over the years these things get razor sharp with all the uh, scraping on the boards. So be very careful you, you don't clean through your finger because if you go a couple of one of these you'll know it. Right okay, uh, so my old palette here. I'll show you what I've got is uh, it's, um, white, cadmium red, ultramarine, Payne's grey, uh, cadmium yellow pale or cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. One, two, three, four, five, five colours. And of course white. So let's, uh, do we want a stormy sky? Uh, well, yeah, let's start with a stormy sky. A bit of red, a bit of blue. Just a bit of white with that. I just love painting with a knife. It's so satisfying to do. I always liken it to to pointing, you know, when you're doing a bit of crazy paving. I love I love crazy paving. Don't not now. I see my wrist. I would never stand up to the. Uh, to the effort of it, but I've done quite a bit of it in my, like on my, on my own account. A bit stingy with the paint. This is a piece of MDF, uh, 2mm MDF, primed with a quite a good artist, artist sort of quality, uh, P, no, artist quality PVA, no there's no such thing, PVA is PVA, thick or thin, okay, so into that we, uh, we want to just have a bit of a bit of ochre, a bit of white, Now, as usual, 
I'm making this up as I go along. Quite easy to change if you've if you've if you've done something that you don't like. You can scrape it all off. You can blend. I did a carpet job for that was my business. But I actually did some paid work for a, an art dealer. And uh, after, the, after the war, he said he went into uh, Europe and bought up. A lot of impressionist paintings for galleries, <coughs> and he was a great friend of uh, our John Piper, and they were to exhibit together. And, but I, I saw on his in his uh, grand house in. Knightsbridge. Uh, he's long dead now. So a lot of John Piper paintings. There were six on the uh, on the staircase of the staircases I was working on, and I asked his wife about them. She said, "Oh, my husband will be back soon, and he'll tell you all about them." So we went to dinner with John Piper three weeks ago. I'm talking about. Over 20 years ago, and he was very elderly then. But and of course he, he came home and he came upstairs and said, Oh, Mr. Usher, I understand you're interested in the John Pipers. And he told me the history of them. And he said, We've got another 20 of these in our apartment in Paris. Oh crumbs, John Pipe is worth about £50,000 a painting. Possibly more. He, he did a lot of mixed media. And painting of churches, glorious work. Wonderful artist. And after I finished work, we, we had a glass of sherry. Because he, I knew I was interested. I told him I was, I was an artist of sorts. And we went into his drawing room and I've told this story many times on YouTube but for new folks that uh, we went in his drawing room oh, we have lounges they have drawing rooms and he showed me some minor Dutch masters there was some Rousseau work, there was uh, Jericho's, uh, one of his sketches for Androcles and the Lion, a very famous painting. And he, he led me to the mantelpiece. And he said, what do you think that is? It was a beautiful landscape and I didn't want to show my ignorance. I said, well, I didn't know what it was. I very finely painted with a knife. It didn't look like it, it looked like brush painting, but so finely done. And he said, who do you think is that like? That's mine. I said, I don't know. Oh, that's too dark. And he said, go and look at the signature. It was a Gustav Corbet. Corbet. So he paid £400 for it and gave it to his mother as a gift. 
in the 50s, early 50s, before a lot of the work was, uh, was as valuable as it is today. And he said, I can't remember when she died, I got it, I whipped it back. And it was a privilege to see it. I, I saw it several times on subsequent occasions when I did more work for, for him. So we've got a sort of a sky there. Let's get some bit of light coming up on that horizon. Oops, sorry. I have to raise that. It clatters on my headphones. Knife painting seems to cry out for lots of slabby passages. I'm doing it light to counter change against the uh, the sea. Right, let's get a bit of dark, let's have a bit of Payne's Grey. I get an impression of light coming out from underneath that, that cloud.
Okay, well, we've got quite an interesting sky there, plenty going on. Right, now, blue, uh, yellow ochre, and white. Okay, that's a bit too solid, that line. Uh, because it's just too stark, it, it, so we've got to somehow bring the sky into the sea, the sea into the sky. So just soften it. Well, that's a bit better. Right, I've added some white to that so we can uh, So we want some of that uh, sky colour in the waves or ripples, whatever. Now I'm not a sea painter. I've never studied it. I've never lived near it. I'm just a holiday sort of painter. I take photographs and just uh, work for, from them.
I'm just picking up some of the light from that cloud above. More paper. And as we come into close to the uh, coast. Touching that wretched there. With practice, you can mix up similar colours. Once you've used up the colour, you can quite easily. Go back and look, I'll just mix that up there. Paint, just paint around those rocks. See, the more you closer you come into the coast, the more oakery the water. Right, okay. Get some of that pure stuff again. Right, now I'm going to put some rocks in there. Could use some burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is always good in with rocks. So if I can find some. Yeah, burnt sienna. Oh, I haven't used it for a while. It's getting a bit solid. Any pliers. <clears throat> Just use a little bit. What I do um, when I finish painting for the day, as I will when I've done this one, I won't be painting until Monday, <coughs> I can use uh, a bit of uh, cling film and put it over the board then I can reuse the paint, paint on Monday. Alright, so a bit of, uh, bit of amber, a bit of blue. A bit of paint. Right, okay. We'll start to work on this uh, rock here. So, paint's grey. Let's have a bit of, a bit of white. Warm that with a bit, of, a bit of that burnt, burnt sienna.
and lift to uh, to light. That's a bit of green. Right, well that's my idea of some rocks there. <coughs> they work or they don't. A bit of sand colour, makes a bit of burnt sienna with, yellow, with the yellow ochre.
I want a bit of shadow on one of those rocks there. Right, a little bit of shadow Not sure about that, it's a bit murky. Well, I haven't got the frame up here, so that will have to do. I will take a photograph of it and publish it on my Facebook page. Okay, I'll let that go. That's just my idea from sort of faulty memory of rocks and Cornwall. Bit, bit murky there, I can't seem to do much about that. <coughs> uh, maybe I could just put a little bit of a uh, Well, that do. See you Monday, folks. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.